it is very important to note that the Europeans didn't come to West Africa to steal, manipulate, and destroy Africans. They came here to also Christianize them. Have you ever been to El Inas Slave Castle before? The Portuguese built a Catholic church in the middle of the Middle Slave Dungeon. After the Dutch seized El Minas Slave Castle from the Portuguese, they also built a church on top of the female slave dungeon. Now, what we have to ask is that why did Europeans build churches in the slave castle? Yes, why? Yeah, to brainwash them, to, to, to Christianize them, to indoctrinate them, to take advantage of them. Control. Yes, control. There's more, unless you ask more questions. You know, you can just How long were they here? You know? Yeah, they, they were here for three months. That's a maximum number. Two weeks minimum. Okay. Depending on when they okay. see African people in here. So the, the, the duration was between two weeks and three months. This is to break them down before they get on the ship? Yes, break them spiritually, physically. To bring them, to bring How them many down. were packed in here at any given moment? Any given 200. Moment. So there are five chambers. The first, second, we and the third. Each? Yes, each one of them had 200 men. So that means there were 1,000 men in a middle dungeon. They fed them two times or three times daily. The smell in the middle dungeon was very bad to the fact that anytime the English slippers came here and went out there, they did smell like dead bodies of animals. Yes, please. The uh, chains that we see in pictures being carried to, I guess, to meet the ships, were any chained here together? We see the pictures of the boats, the ships, mm -hmm. where they're all squashed in like sardines. Yeah. Were they chained here or were they just all crammed in? When were they chained? Not Lay. all of them were chained in the middle of the Now, the strongest of them all. The freedom fighters, the most freedom fighters, were those that were left in the first cell. There are six holes in that cell. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those African men who were extremely freedom fighters were held to the chains and chains. But when you get to the last chain, I'll show you there's, there's a metal there where they'll, they'll, they'll chain some of them, they'll chain their legs so that they, they, they will be restricted to fight back. Once you are being chained, you can yeah, you can't move, you have been restricted to even fight back. Not all of them were chained, but many of them were chained. Together? Two, yes. three at a time? Yes. The, chain, the, the, the chains were such that one, one chain could hold, like there were minor chains, mm -hmm. and there were larger ones, mm -hmm. to hold as many as 15 African men or more at a time. So the first person on the chain had to get movement <coughs> before those behind him could make any steps of movement. That was done in order to control them. Mm -hmm. It's part of the mass incarceration back in the U.S. It's the same thing. If we study the system in the, in the, in, 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 in the slave castle, you realize that Europeans are very predictable people. They don't change. Okay. European culture is about the product, privilege, and power. African culture is about the values, mutual relationship, and respect. That is why in Africa, even when you meet somebody that you are going to do business with, you exchange pleasantries. You don't talk about a business. You don't focus on the product or the business, but we focus on the relationship. That is why in our local market, there are no prices attached to the product. You have to speak to the seller. You ask the seller, how much is this, 20 cities? Where are you from? I'm from Kumasi. Before you realize 20 cities becomes 15 or 12 or even 8 cities. European culture, they focus on the product. That is why when you go to Europe, all the products have prices. You don't have to speak to anyone. <laughs> Pain. You yes, no relationship. Yes. So why the word castle? Was that a disguise of what was actually going on? No, you, you have to know that the history was written by the Europeans. They wanted down every single piece of information. They named this place a slave castle. But these are slave dungeons. I don't call them slave masters. They were not our masters. I call them slaves. Because they force us to become like that. And we shouldn't call our ancestors slaves. They were enslaved people. Yes. That's the difference. Yes. Yes.
L'ultima via. These are candles. Mm -hmm. yeah, some, some of our people who come here light the candles in order to honor and show respect. I made mention of the fact that the Africans don't worship their ancestors. We don't honor them. That's the difference. We don't worship them. All right, so this is the large chamber, but right behind me is a very small cell. And that small cell is an extension to the five cells. Many African men in the middle dungeon got very sick and weak and blind. Such African men were left to die in that small cell. And after they died, the English slavers would take their bodies and trash them in the ocean. Before what we are all standing lies an altar which is part of what we call the African traditional spirituality. There's a difference between spirituality and religion. Africans were spiritualists. Religion is a man made thing, you can corrupt it. But this very one, there are 77 of them in Cape Coast. But this altar is the head altar. The name of this altar is Nana Taber. Mm -hmm. The priest sitting on the altar, his name is Nana Kwame Nkra. He's in charge of the altar. But this was established after the abolition. There was a very big tunnel here, very huge tunnel. The tunnel is connected to the door we call the Dove Return. All the African men in the middle dungeon who survived the conditions in the middle slave dungeon were forced through the tunnel system to the door we call the Dove Return. The Dove Return was the final exit of all the Africans in the middle dungeon and the female dungeon. The Dove Return was at a point where a new journey emerged and an end of an experience was totally disconnected from the Africans. But this tunnel system got sealed off in the year 1834 to officially mark the abolishment. There has never been an abolishment. Europeans realized that they took a lot from the African people. So they move on to what you call colonialism. And colonialism is another form of imperialism, which is still going on economically to this very day. Now, there's one of the original chains. Let me show you, please. Sorry. <clears throat> now, please come this one. You see this? You see this? Yes. And this one. The chains of the African men in order to restrict their movement of steps, of chain them. And this is one of the original slave chains. You can touch it from the place. You can pass it on the place. And these are raves that were laid here by the global African diaspora in order to pay respect to the ancestors who died in the middle slave dungeon. <clears throat> Okay, let's stand right here if you are done touching. Okay, please come closer. Please. Oh, please come closer. Very close. Now, today we are going to welcome you back to Motherland. Uh, we are going to you open. Oh yeah. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Why do you want to do? We have a reserve ceremony we call the Journey of Return. Like I said, we don't worship our ancestors. We did honor them. I'm going to let the priest pray for all of you. He's going to mark you with white clay to indicate that you have truly returned to the motherland. 
as part of the processes of returning, you have to go through the traditional protocols to regain your resilience, your culture, your identity. And I'm, I'll, I'll interpret whatever he says. Okay, please. Thank you. Abu. It's called Fanti, and I'm a Fanti, I'm from here. Fantis are people from this part of Ghana, we call them Fantis. Um, let's move to the other face of the... Yes, yes. He's going to, he's going to mark you the white clay, so symbolize that you have been back to the land. That is what he's going to do. Now when he does, you say, you say, Aqua, you say, you, you, you reply with that, you respond with that, with that, with that, it means thank you, Aqua, that is your work. Can I say something yeah. here? Okay. Um, yes, please. What he's going to do, in our tradition, um, there are a lot of things that I need, but I just want to just be brief, in such a way that, it also washes you from one end to the other, transition to the other. One, if they use this white clay, and what is white means, it means, it signifies uh, 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 cleanliness, purification, and all that. In case there is any evil, bad omen following you, is using this as a mark. In the Bible, God instructed Israelites that they should use a blood to mark their door, that when they see the blood, the evil will pass over. So in our tradition, we also have the same thing, that when you see this white clay, the devil will pass over. That is why we are here for him to do that purification. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, the next person please just go. What's the word? Aqua. Let me say that. Let me say that. Let me say that.
Or if you have eaten from your heart, you can just do it on, on the altar. Can you use your wife, one in your right hand, one your daughter in the money? Yeah, no one will let you know. Yeah. It's also a sure sign. Take on my left the cross of the drain. Go on my left. So this was the church on top of the male slave dungeon. The name of the church is Society for the Propagation of the Gospel, a church of England. Uh, please, let's, let's see the male punishment here, please. This way. Let's go. This way, please. This way. Okay, my wonderful families, back in the middle dungeon, I made mention of 1,000 men. Now, there were many African men in the middle dungeon who tried to fight back for their freedom and rights. Such African men were brought in this cell to be killed. There are no windows in this cell. I personally do not call this a cell. I call this the grave of Cape Coast Slave Dungeon. Uh, you watch your head, you take your time, let's go inside. Let me explain to you what happened in the cell. Please come. This place is the male punishment hell. 
and there are no windows here, no windows. And this cell had three doors, the first door, the second door, and the third door. You know, back in the middle dungeon, I made mention of 1,000 men. There were many African men in the middle dungeon who tried to fight back for their freedom and right. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise that the African men never fought back. It's a fallacy, it's a lie, they fought back. Due to that, the English slavers designed a grave like this. This is not a cell. Is this place happy? Very hot. Before the English slavers had to bring the African men here, they, they physically abused them, chained them and shackled them. There could be five, ten or more African men here. There are no clothes or the three doors. The African men were brought here were denied of food, air, light, and water till they all died. asking them like that, but I tried to teach the children once <clears throat> years ago about all these African countries over 50. And I did a song from Mandela Benita Swan of Universal, Burundi, Cameroon, Camp Verde. But I would get to Djibouti, they would laugh. And we went on Egypt, Ethiopia, and all the rest. But I wanted to know, has there any research been done on the lowest number of so-called slaves taken from a country? What is the country that had the less or least number of slaves or men and women taken? From you know, during that time, Africans didn't have the kind of geopolitical boundaries that we have. Yeah. They didn't have the president in Nigeria, right. Mali, Canada. Mm -hmm. They were only African empires, kingdoms, chiefs. So the Europeans name, like when they came to Ghana because they found a lot of gold, they named this part the Gold Coast. Oh, okay. And the Ivory Coast, Codiva became the Ivory Coast because they captured a lot of elephants. Okay. So, they that. so it's very difficult to determine or you know, estimate the number of Africans mm -hmm. who were kidnapped in various caring yeah. countries. Mm -hmm. However, it is estimated that over 12 million Africans were kidnapped or captured along the coast of West Africa. West Africa. Yes. Alone. Alone. Okay. And over 4 million were from Cape Coast Slave Castle. Wow. This is the British biggest slave castle okay. in the whole of West Africa. All right, West Africa. Yeah, but the three slave castles, El Vina Slave Castle is the biggest. This slave castle was the headquarters, the administrative uh, structure okay. of the British in the whole of West Africa. It's very difficult to actually. But, 12, but I do think that 12 million is a very small figure. Mm -hmm. Because some of the Africans came all the way from Mali, Burkina Faso, yeah, they all over. Maybe died. So, how far inland did they come to get this and to figure out? Do, do you know Mali? Have you heard of Mali before? Yes. Burkina Faso is very far away from here. <coughs> it's very far. They walked for weeks. Before they got here. And we normally focus on the slave castles, slave dungeons, castles, slave forts. But there were slave camps, they walked, they get tired, they keep them there, they feed them for a few days, then they continue. There were slave roots, slave rivers, where they clean them. They look very dirty, so they clean them in the slave rivers. There are also slave mountains, slave caves, where they shelter. It, 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 it's a big system, very big system. We have many books after the tour. I'm going to oh, yes. recommend some of the books. If you are interested, you should get them. But this place is very hard. So let me put the light out for just five seconds. Let me go up.